2017 has to be one of the most interesting years for the video game industry. It has been the year of both the extraordinary and the crap AAA game, sprinkled with the mid-tier surprise and the magical indie hit. Resident Evil 7 has scared us, big budget games have wowed us, little budget gems have impressed, and epic open world adventures seen aplenty. There have been new spins on classic pastimes, risky ventures into new competitive games, and even cooperation between unlikely organizations. The year started off on the wrong foot with two of the most controversial games, For Honor and Mass Effect Andromeda. It was clear that For Honor was doomed from the start. <laughs> Our not-so-favorite Ubisoft game was stuffed with terrible netcode, bad matchmaking, class balance issues, and a shallow gameplay loop. It was a bad fighting game, masquerading as a revolutionary action game. Players have all but forgotten about For Honor. Mass Effect Andromeda came out a month later, and the uproar was even more lit. The unpolished story was unworthy of the franchise, which was the first of many crimes. It came with blasé characters, horrible animations, and a shallow sense of exploration. These things crippled its reception. Even worse, it was clear that EA knew we wouldn't be welcoming the game with open arms. They essentially executed Mission Carrot on a Stick, bundling Andromeda in Origin Access and restricting reviews mere hours before launch. Very effective in covering up what the game was truly like. Mass Effect Andromeda was consumer exploitation at its finest, EA's first large-scale consumer dupe of the year, but not to be the last. But before those would happen, the good stuff started pouring in. Games like Hollow Knight, Nier, Dead Cells, Pyre, Sonic Mania, Divinity 2, Cuphead, and A Hat in Time would lead the charge as the most amazing games this year. Unfortunately, this goodness has more or less been washed away by year's end. What was once a fantastic year has turned into the AAA crash, a collection of the dirtiest stories of the year. It has been the year of the money catch, the drive-by and the all-you-can-eat consumer buffet. With publishers prodding their games with their greedy pitchforks and transforming them from innocent experiences into much more complicated services, it seems like the joy has been ripped out of gaming in 2017. In a year overflowing with great games, it just sucks to go out on a low point due to all of this money scuffling. But there are more worrisome trends that need to be highlighted. So eager to profiteer, AAA Gaming got sidelined and ended up crashing in 2017. Looking back, I have come to a bitter conclusion. The best games of the year may have already been forgotten. It would have been very difficult to make that statement in 2010 with Red Dead, Mass Effect 2, and Super Mario Galaxy up in the running. Or in 2013 with GTA 5 and The Last of Us. And don't forget about Skyrim in 2011 and Uncharted 2 in 2009. These were giants of games. Every single one was a big budget AAA game swimming in quality. These were titles that swung for the fences and left nothing on the table. They were filled to the brim with potential and they delivered the best graphics, the best gameplay and the best storytelling. They had it all. Adventure permeated many, excitement in others, or pure fun. GTA 4 building on top of prior successes, Metal Gear Solid 4 doing the same. Portal 2 innovating and delivering an experience like no other. Kotar 2 bringing honor to Star Wars, unlike Battlefront 2. No other games came close to matching their brilliance. There were indeed some controversies every single year, but nothing that would tarnish those memories. But in 2017, many have. One of those games is going to be EA. At this rate, I think it's safe to say EA is a game because it's clearly what they've been playing these days. Like a dirty napkin, EA continues to make a mess and wipe itself clean afterwards. At least they try to. In response to our critiques, EA tried to get the ball rolling with Battlefront 2 post-launch, to tidy up and cover up its progression issues that were clearly tied to their attempts at bankrupting people, and not just with our money. The best video games exchange effort for reward. RPGs enhance their stories, develop characters and give you fat loot. Puzzle games like Portal 2 make you feel smart for being smart. And shooting games give you fun stuff to play with once you spend enough time excelling in the game. One of EA's most secret weapons is that their games are designed to tamper with this process. 
Battlefront 2's progression system was atrocious in the beta, horrible when it launched, and bad weeks later. Amidst several updates and much public scrutiny, it is clear that Andrew Wilson does not want to surrender paid loot boxes as much as the news would prove otherwise. EA is doing everything in their power to hide behind closed doors and slowly trickle down fixes to a system that far and away needs to be eradicated. At no point are paid power items and laborious grind systems good for games, our enjoyment, or for us engaging in meaningful progression. It is clearly there as a trap and to prolong the time spent in a game to acquire and play with what we want. But Battlefront 2 wasn't the only game that showcased its predatory stance on consumerism. Shadow of War, Forza 7, the new Need for Speed, NBA 2K18, and others would all integrate some form of pay-to-win mechanic into their games. These things not only lessen the enjoyment that you get from each game, but more importantly, they impact the industry in a bad way. Call me crazy, but I'd prefer to have an industry not flooded with fighting and controversy or forcing people to spend precious time making charts and spreadsheets like these to discover how bad some of these systems truly are. Progression in Battlefront 2 was so cryptic and so complicated that someone actually had to make this for people to understand what they were truly getting into. This is ridiculous. People have to enter this inspector gadget mode because these things aren't communicated at all to consumers, nor do game makers actually have to disclose the way these systems are designed, and that's a big problem. It's entirely possible that microtransaction systems and games are formulated to take advantage of gambling tendencies, to be as addictive as a slot machine. It's technology being built for the future and companies are fighting to control it. A few months ago, Activision submitted a patent on an engine design that could actually profile you predict what you want so badly, and tamper with your experience to get you to pay for it instead of play for it. It's unholy digital manipulation. These events, just like the XP controversy of Destiny 2 or the microtransactions in UFC 3, create distrust. Even if they've been the norm in prior games like UFC, it doesn't really matter. They turn consumer against creator when in fact we should be on the same side. We should be fighting together against the creation of shitty games, not against the games that should be succeeding in the first place. A long time ago, I think a lot of us looked up to game makers, especially in a AAA market. We expected great games and we got them. They were fair and innovative. At least it seemed like that way. Today, I'm not so sure we can say the same thing. Somewhere along the lines, something went wrong. The big AAA companies have decided that delivering honest, good games is no longer the top priority. They are not competing with the best game makers out there to make the better product. They aren't competing with themselves to revolutionize the industry. They are competing with what is right for us. They aren't challenging themselves to revolutionize the industry and better serve us. They are consuming us and reaping the profits. AAA game development has crash landed in 2017 like an airplane going mayday. And like a fat suckling pig, they've gorged themselves on us. They have cast a big shadow over the other successes of the year. The small games that are in need of that spotlight. Hollow Knight, Little Nightmares, What Remains of Edith Finch, Pyre, or A Hat in Time just to name a few. But that sour aftertaste of these AAA games is also penetrating the great AAA games of the year. The Mario Odysseys, The Breath of the Wild, and The Horizon Zero Dawns. It's my hope that next year the great games of the year won't get drowned out by negative stories, most all surfacing from the companies we should be looking up to rather than down on. Thanks for watching everyone, happy new years and we'll see you in 2018.